Disgraced President and CEO Catherine Tate appeared before committee to defend her decisions as head of the organization. Andrew Shear tears her to shreds. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. The soon-to-be former president and CEO of the CBC, Catherine Tate, appeared before committee, and there was a bunch of rounds. She was there for quite a while. And she, the whole time, she was trying to talk about how 71% of Canadians think the CBC is amazing, how she did a great job despite the amounts of layoffs, despite the, the plummeting numbers, despite nearly 20% of the polled population saying they no longer trust the CBC as a, a news source. Despite all of those facts, she just kept saying to the committee members that she was great and wonderful. Now, of course, the liberals and everybody and the NDP were all like, oh, good job, wonderful, yay. So there's not much to say there. However, in the very last round, there's like 10 minutes left in the whole committee. She's almost to the finish line. And Andrew Shear gets the microphone. And I promise you, this is great. Just, just, <laughs> just great. I'll get right to it. Uh, Ms. Tate, would you categorize your term at the CBC as a success? Yes. Uh, so you believe that you've left it in a better place than how you found it? Absolutely. Okay. So if I just go through a, a, a few things, and I just have to say, you must have uh, quite the echo chamber there if you if you believe that, because uh, you know uh, when we're talking about how out of touch the CBC can be with Canadians, you only need to look at the bonuses that you paid out during an affordability crisis to executives and senior management while laying off the frontline staff, something that even Peter Mansbridge called uh, the CBC out for. Um, when we look at all the metrics, all the key performance indicators, ad revenue overall down, trust is down, despite polls that the CBC might have commissioned for itself. Uh, independent third party organizations that analyze this indicate that trust in the CBC fell 17% in just four years. Viewership is down less than 3% in primetime markets. That means during prime time, when, when, when Canadians are getting into the living, room, living rooms to watch what is on TV, 97% of Canadians say no to the CBC, tune it out, and move on to other things. Based on all of that, Ms. Tate, I just want to say, on behalf of the Conservative Party, I want to thank you for your efforts in helping us promote the campaign to defund the CBC. Because I think outside of the Conservative Caucus, uh, you have been the most successful person in creating the demand to defund the CBC. $1.4 billion of taxpayers' money doesn't go for an online streaming service. It goes to a whole host of products in which Canadians are choosing other sources of information and entertainment. So again, I don't really have a question there. I just wanted to say thank you for your efforts to help us defund the CBC. <laughs> oh, I didn't even see it come. <laughs> it was great. It, it, it's the second or third time I watched it and it still is awesome to watch. <laughs> Just rips her. I mean, she must have been in shock when she <laughs> when she heard him say that. So, of course, the chair, the liberal chair, uh, Heidi Frey from Vancouver, <laughs> had to give the woman an Even though he didn't have a question, she gave the woman some microphone time to say what she wanted to say. So, in <laughs> let's let her hear what she has to say. I must say that it really does shock me. The extent to which certain members of this committee and, and SUPS in, or whatever you call it, um, seem to make me the target um, and throw insults to my um, tenure at CBC Radio-Canada um, in order to discredit the organization. The organization has stood for 90 years, and we know 79% of, of Canadians say they believe that CBC Radio-Canada should continue. And so to, to have this be uh, somehow, uh, um, uh, you know, a proof that, to, uh, that, def that we should be defunding the CBC is ridiculous. A couple of things that I would say to this statement. First, 
79 percent of <laughs> come on man i guess they must have asked they must have ran that poll in the lunchroom right that's where they asked those people <laughs> you know 79 percent of canadians in the in the cbc lunchroom they all agree that the cbc should continue because then they can get paid Maybe they ask the board of directors and <laughs> that's where they are. 79%? What, <laughs> come on. Come on. What I really want to say, though, is before I let Andrew Shear answer to that, is it's either CBC Radio Canada or Sabe Sa Radio Canada. It's not CBC Radio Canada. That just bugs me. It's like... You know what I mean? Say them by the same rules. Don't say one than the other. It's, I find it to be very pretentious. Now, I appreciate that her French is probably much stronger than mine, but that doesn't give her the right to say one in English than the ne very next in French when they, you know, should both be said in the same language. Do, do we not agree on that? Like, does that sound kind of ridiculous in your mind, the way she just rolls that R out all of a sudden? I mean, if she would have said Sabe Sa, I could appreciate that, but you don't, French... They don't say CBC, right? Because those that's not how you enunciate those letters. That, of course, is only lends itself to the type of personality that we're dealing with. She thinks that she, he, she's being insulted. Andrew Shear has something to say back. I just want to point out that those are not insults. Uh, it may be insulting to hear that ad revenue is down, but that is just a fact. It may be insulting to hear that 97% of Canadians choose to watch other things on TV other than the CBC, but that is just a fact. It is just a fact that trust in the CBC has fallen by 17% in just four years. Before I let him finish and really, <laughs> really just wreck her, um, I would point out that it's not that it was an insult. She just heard it as an insult, but really what she heard was her feelings being hurt. The facts don't care about your feelings. And the fact, the, the way that she tried to frame it as somebody being mean to her is only her own mechanism inside of her own mind. This is supposed to be the head of a corporation, both CEO and president, and she can't withstand the slightest bit of criticism. I'm not sure that that's a good fit. However, I don't think that it was uh, insulting. It was absolutely a fact. And when she said insult, what she should have said is, boo hoo, you hurt my feelings. If those facts hurt your feelings, I suggest that rather than make people not say them, you simply try to adapt to the truth. Then we will all be better people all the way around. Now, just when you think that she's off the hook, <laughs> the, the, the one, two, three combination comes out of Mr. Shear, and it is really, really nice to watch. Uh, when I had a chance to ask you about trust in the CBC, uh, one of your responses back was that uh, corrections were up, that the number of corrections that the CBC News issued is up, and that was a proof, uh, some kind of evidence that the CBC could be trusted. I look at it the other way. When you have uh, a falsehood broadcast on the national news and then a correction that follows up a few days later uh, or, or on, a, on an online argue, uh, uh, post, that, that doesn't instill confidence and trust in the CBC. It points out that the CBC allows things to get to air before doing proper vetting, validation and fact checking. And it may be insulting to hear the dollar amounts about executive bonuses, but I'll tell you who was really insulted. The frontline workers that were laid off when the CBC was claiming it didn't have enough money to keep that entire workforce and then reads in the paper or reads on a news source other than the CBC because they probably weren't watching it either, that senior management and executive all got bonuses. So again, those are just facts. It's, it's the, the, everything I have, I have listed off comes seconds. from third party independent sources that have indicated all that. And so I just want to again say thanks for your help in our efforts to defund the CBC. <laughs> Can you, <laughs> can you imagine when she left that room? <laughs> when she left that room, can you imagine right now where she's sitting down having supper and she's going to hear this sound bite? <laughs> How much it's going to sting for her to realize that she helped defund the CBC more than any single person outside of the conservative party. <laughs> I mean, you know, when only 3% of people are watching during the most, the busiest time 
of, of television, then obviously you, you've got an issue, you've got a problem. When all of your news is slanted towards a, a particular narrative, when all of your programming is slanted toward that exact same narrative, I, I would hazard a guess that the 3% three, three of people that are watching it probably live in a region where there is no other kind of network. There's only like one of these, you know, three networks to choose from kind of situation. Now, Miss Tate would have shepherded over all of that, right? And the idea behind her being, you know, 80% trusted by the Canadian or 79% trusted by the Canadian population, I, I find to be quite absurd. I kind of think that it's probably down somewhere around the 5%, but all of the corporate media is not being trusted because of the narrative that they tried to sling because of the brainwashing that they tried to bring. And we can see that all over the world where these far left organizations are just getting destroyed and rightly so. Andrew Shear, however, just, he is going to live in her head until, you know, for the next 10 years. <laughs> Thanks for all your help, he says to her. And, you know, does it with a big smile. <laughs> and I'm sure that that is going to bounce around inside of her mind for some time to come until she moves over to Europe into her house that she has over there. And tries her best to forget that Canada even exists. <laughs> I thought that was worth sharing. I think that Andrew Shear handled that really well. And I believe that the CBC deserves what they get. Because none of the creative minds were putting out anything that people wanted to watch. And the only people that I feel bad for are the... The, the behind the scenes, like the, the camera crews, the grips, the lighting, even some of the makeup, the people that actually put the work in on the show, on any of the programming, those guys would have had a hard time finding more work somewhere else. Like, you know what I mean? That would, they don't deserve to be taken down with the ship to go down with the ship. But and that, of course, comes all the way back to the direction of leadership, right? So we come back all the way to the president and CEO, Catherine Tate. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.